<laughs> All right. Hi, guys. How's it going? Um, so I'm Dalkin Starbine, uh, executive producer for the Equestrian Broadcasting Company. Uh, on my right there is Tic Tac. Hello. Uh, Jesse Nowacking. Yo. Um, Essential. Yo. Uh, Ariel or Trix. Hello. And uh, the fourth Aggie. Nice to meet you. Oh. Um, so, for those, well, first of all, I guess, who is familiar with uh, who we are and what we do? Good number Ooh, of you. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for those of you who do not know what we do, um, we are a bunch of people who basically got together to put together a radio serial based off of the fan fiction Fallout Equestria by KCAT. Uh, And so basically throughout this panel, we're just going to be uh, going over what we've learned in, uh, about that process and sharing it with you guys. So, preparation, what's that? Um, <laughs> he has notes. So what is adaptation exactly? I mean, most of you probably know the general meaning of the word adaptation. Um, in this particular case, we're adapting a story from one storytelling medium to another. Um, so, a lot of people think that means just basically translating a narrative to a script, and while it's part of it, um, there's definitely a lot more of that process. Uh, and we'll be going over that during the rest of the panel. Uh, and it has to do with uh, translating the actual story itself, staying true to uh, what the story is trying to convey, and uh, really making sure that um, the pace is, and the plot still translate uh, appropriately given the uh, different pacing of the medium. So when doing adaptation, um, obviously for a project like this, it takes more than just a couple people. Um, so you, you need to be able to figure out uh, just what kind of resources you're going to need for that. Um, so you can make the proper commitment and not just go, oh crap, this was a lot bigger than I thought it was. Uh, so uh, usually that starts with uh, whatever you're trying to adapt. Um, you take that, you outline it, uh, break it down basically. Um, and you know, any of you guys feel free to chime in at any time here. <laughs> break it down. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, break it down. Um, uh, we'll be doing a Q&A near the end of the panel, um, and so we'll have everybody line up at that time. Okay, so um, when it comes to an adaptation, especially for something like a radio play, you have to break it down into different components, aspects of mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. For instance, you need writers in order to basically translate the story into the medium that you wish. You have to have, um, um, you have, to have uh, basically people um, um, personable people, like our PR pe folk, like um, Aggie over here, mm -hmm. in order to basically communicate with your audience. You need to have voice actors, like Jesse and um, Trix over here, so that way you, ha you can give actual voice to the characters in your production. You need sound editors, like Tic Tac, and you you'll need, you need leaders, like, um, like uh, Dawkin. I don't and, know what he's talking about. And you also <laughs> need, and you need some folks like me. Uh, artists to basically um, create a promotional material for you to uh, for the audience to be able to see, such as the um, artwork up there. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so all of that, you you wind up establishing teams and whatnot. Uh, 
basically when, when Radio Who's came to me uh, initially, well, I guess I went to Radio Who's, but uh, he, he approached a number of people um, with a vision for this project. And uh, the big thing there was having uh, the drive and dedication, first and foremost. Uh, being able to uh, make sure that everybody who got on board was going to be on board for the whole ride. Um, because uh, I'm sure a number of you have, have heard about uh, uh, some of the projects that have fallen apart and whatnot. And I think one of the big things was Radio Who's, whenever anyone got on board, was very adamant about making sure that everyone who was on board was fully committed and uh, going to stick with it, and uh, it certainly helped me uh, in getting everything together, especially uh, in figuring out how big this project was going to be. Your um, 2,000 page story. Yeah. yeah. It's very you, large. You also I mean, we, we knew it was going to be big. We you also think in consideration how long it takes to pr produce and get organized mm -hmm. and get going and then even to produce the episodes. That dedication needs to become a, come over time. You know, you can't just go and say, "I'll be part of the project for six months." You know, we'd be going at it for how many years now? Two. Uh, yeah, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. So, mm -hmm. that's why we need that's why we look for dedicated people who will be on for mm -hmm. long term uh, until the completion of the product project if we can. It's, it's not an immediate return. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a very large scope project, especially when you take into account the fact that everyone on the team is volunteering their time, and so that means stuff happens. Um, we're, we're trying to get stuff put together to uh, refine the process so that we can still get content out a little bit more quickly despite that, but it, it definitely provides a massive hurdle as far as getting content out on a regular basis. Mostly it's about organizing all the small little bits together, and that, that, that's basic project management. So we've been trying to integrate those fun, fundamental techniques to help us become more efficient and more, I guess, organized to get the stuff out faster. So, what I uh, what I liked about the team is that when I was brought on as a voice actress, I was introduced to everyone, so everyone on the team like knows everyone pretty much, you know. So that that's what separated it from different projects for me, because sometimes I just get lines and I just do them, and then that's it. I see the product a couple months later, whatever. But if I had questions about my character or something like that, everyone was like so willing to help me, you know. So get people who are good with people, basically. People, yeah. people. It's, it's definitely a very important part of uh, keeping the team going and together, I think, especially as a volunteer project like this. Right. We're all friends here. I mean, yeah. we're, we haven't, I don't think of any, I can't think of any scuff, scuffles we had. No, no, I no. Yeah, yeah. Actually, very, very, I, I think that's a foreign, that's a foreign yeah. concept in our group. Yeah, as far we've as worked very well yeah. together we're, so far. No, we've I had hate all these guys secretly. <laughs> <but> <laughs> tell them. Yeah. We've Try. had one or two minor things, but nothing, you know, no major drama schisms. Yeah, um, everyone's pretty, pretty, much, pretty much mature. I think, one, I think also one of the biggest things is that, um, notice how that, um, uh, radio hooves. Well, he was like the guy who was like the very the what do you say progenitor of the project. Oh yeah, he, he's the one that made it happen. I remember yeah, like um when it was like two like almost two and a half years ago. I was one of the very first people he contacted, and he just he saw like a animation I was kind of sort of working on for Fall for Fall of Equestria, and he's like, you know, I have this project in mind, and I want you to be on it, and just the way he presented himself, he was very mm -hmm. professional. He showed that he had a lot of passion for this thing. And I think that's one of the most important things that is driving like all of us today. He was so passionate about this project that it basically affected the rest of us. Yeah, I, know, I know for a certain fact that um, me, I was kind of just an artist. I just do things when I wanted to. But then I saw this guy, hey, he really wanted to get this done. And he was willing to push, push me right. to get things done. And that's how we can make stuff like this. Yeah, sometimes, very... sometimes we get burned out a little bit, and yeah. he's always there to bring us back up. So I've always, whenever I have my own moments sometimes, it's really good to see him. He's always passionate. Yeah, the, that enthusiasm is very infectious. Yes. And he always manages to bring a level of morale back to the team that uh, I haven't been seeing anyone else be able to. 
something I can only really strive to, but um, yeah, so um, getting back to the scope thing, um, so we understood uh, from the get-go that this was going to be a several years long project. Um, I think the, one of the important things that we've learned since then is really establishing on a more detailed level um, how that process is going to go. Uh, outlining the story and the plot points you want to cover, uh, being able to figure out um, how that flow is going to work so that you can um, make sure that the project isn't going to take six years and is only going to take, you know, two or three. Um, as a result, I think our project is going to be a little bit in between those, but uh, we've done some refinements since then. It's definitely been a, a learning process. Um, so then, um, wow, my brain stopped. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I just, I, I apologize. I, I flew out here from Montana and then, well actually I flew out to North Carolina with my friend Silverlight there. Um, and then we drove up for 10 hours, so. I had 15 <laughs> hours. <laughs> Look, <laughs> looking over oh. looking what you were talking about, yeah. um, the next uh, aspect, the, like the, probably, mm. there's the whole concept, of, you know, the whole part of pre-production. That's basically setting mm. everything up in order to basically make the project even happen. And a lot of times pre-production becomes like one of the most, one of the longer aspects of a project. And more or less technically, mm -hmm. pre-production lasted for a year. Um, essentially, uh, closer to a year and a half, actually. Yeah. Um, it was mostly organizing different different people together, uh, making sure that um, that we had a cultivated interest in this project. Mm -hmm. Like um, that, um, I, I was told by other people there were other uh, attempts to do Fallout Equestria radio plays, and they fell short. And I think one of the biggest things is that you, you're trying to you're trying to be passionate about a project. But then no one listen. No one listens to your thing. Mm -hmm. No one even realizes it exists. That kind of kills your enthusiasm for it. And I think one of the largest um, things that uh, helped us was that we had interest. We had cultivated an interest by uh, advertising, mm -hmm. um, spreading word of mouth, and that um, that this was something that was actually going to go on. Something that will actually happen. And an excitement within the team too. And I think that was especially important. Uh, it, was, it goes back to what Aggie was saying about uh, Radio Who's being very much uh, having that infectious enthusiasm. Um, and, and so through that, uh, even despite uh, when we weren't putting out stuff or when all we were putting out were just promos and such like that, um, we were able to uh, keep that integrity uh, of the team while we figured out, uh, you know, okay, we need um, people on script writing and reviewing, and we need people to edit the episodes together, and uh, we need so many voices, and we need uh, art? scoring and art, mm -hmm. and um, don't forget there's so, about many, me. so many components yes. to it. No one cares about you. <laughs> who, who is this guy? Why, why is he up here? I don't understand. No. I don't think you announced what who, what he does. No, oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot. Oh, yeah, that. We, we, we really should. So, yeah, he does art. We've but got, uh, I'm the lead sound designer yeah. for the project. I make things go boom. Pretty sounds. <laughs> uh, I voice Little Pip. Woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That was a simultaneous. A bunch of people just went woo. Like at the yeah. same, I've never heard that. <laughs> That's awesome. We let the dogs in here. I'm the uh, I'm essential the art director. I make sure that the episodes have pretty little art when you when they get broadcasted. Pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. I'm the voice of Zakora and the voice of Regina Grandfathers. Yeah. And I'm I guess admin of PR and I talk to y'all and get feedback and talk to the radio stations that air our episode before we, we actually release it. And a bunch of other things that internal to the team that we won't speak of sometimes. Mm. Yes. Aggie but wears many I, I can get I can get kind of, kind of, uh, I, I, I like fires under people's butts is a good, good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the residential uh, arsonist, I guess, in a way. But it's, a, it's a very important position. It is, but it can get annoying. To yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, as Aggie knows, I help with that a little bit, but uh, so 
once you've got your team together and you know what everybody is going to do, at least theoretically, that, that has seemed to be a constantly refined process for us. Um, a lot of people on our team um, actually do fulfill multiple roles. Uh, I actually got on the team as a voice actor. Um, and uh, then I went into uh, a little bit of script review and whatnot. And then I was actually admin of PR for a while before we pulled Aggie into the team, uh, who has just been fantabulous. Um, um, as, as and for, then, um, um, as, as for uh, my brother, uh, goes by the uh, name Pashu, he initially came on as a musician, but then I realized, man, I am really pathetic at backgrounds. So he actually, um, all the background work that you see in, the, um, in this art here is um, largely, largely of his creation. I mostly handle the, um, the characters and uh, making sure that the, um, um, there's uh, texturing effects and all that, you know, that, like that, that wispy cloud in the background. I am proud of that. Yeah, we I also actually... have other artists on the team that he bosses around sometimes. Yeah. He's very well, bossy. Ultimate power, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I also got brought on as a voice actor, and then I think like our editors disappeared on us. Yeah. It was yeah. Um, so and then basically, I got promoted around the time that I transitioned from um, admin of PR to project coordinator. Um, it was January last year, I think. Yeah, January last year. Uh, we had a couple of people who were doing editing, myself included. Uh, but we didn't really have a dedicated editing team. Uh, that was a big boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> so um, that was a, a lot of stuff. Is, is between January of last year and uh, now, uh, we started getting a lot of, of stuff organized and, and figuring out exactly uh, what teams were lacking as far as technical uh, requirements. Uh, because, you know, it's great to have a full cast and have uh, wonderfully talented voices for um, all of our, our main characters and all of our side characters. You know, just the, the talent that we've got up in this team is just... I feel like I'm drowning sometimes. I don't. I don't know how I got here. What? what, I mean, like, what look why at do you guys keep table. me? We have, we have a talented voice actor right just mm -hmm. next to you, more or less. You mean me? <laughs> I suppose so, but uh, oh, I don't even. Who is, <laughs> I was like, you're both. <laughs> but um, so, well, I lost my train of thought there. Right. Uh, so, uh, but without the crew that you know, puts it all together, um, you literally do just have a bunch of voices. Um, it's, it's thanks to our art team and our musical team and our, uh, edit uh, our editors and uh, especially the, uh, the, the resource management team, as I like to put it, who uh, uh, are, 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 are we, are we going to refer it to as our, our professional arsonist team now? I'm going to call it project management. Yes, we'll go with that. Um, I think that's how I have it written down on the Google Doc anyway. <laughs> um, you know, making sure that uh, lines are getting in on time and um, the deadlines are being made. Um, you know, w without all that, we don't have a project. So it's very important, I think, to acknowledge all of that as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to have discipline, but not too much. And yeah. I think our team has like the perfect balance because if there's no discipline at all. It's just like, oh, I'll just get my lines in whenever, you know, it'll be fine. And then nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but if there's too much discipline, then like, it's like you have to have it in by this time or you're fired or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then people well, get scared. And they're like, I don't really want to do this. Yeah. We, we try to take into account a lot uh, about what's going on with the people individually. Like sometimes a voice actor can't get their lines in because something happens to the family or if, uh, you know, got a cold or something, you know, we, we, we don't yell at people, you know, but we still want to try to get results. So I think you're right, we do have a good balance of sorts. The big thing is um, when that kind of stuff happens, um, that person is not being a drain on the team. The team becomes a resource for that person. Um, you know, if someone's dealing with emotional issues or something like that, um, you know, we're a bunch of friends, we're all here for each other. 
So if they need anything, we're there for them. And um, in return, you know, they're there for us. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, like I was, I'm, I'm currently trying to record for episode three, but like uh, I moved to New York and then my mom got diagnosed with cancer like a week later. So I've been like, ah, oh, everything's bad. So they've been very respectful of that and you know, have given me time and stuff. Yeah. Um, click, 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 click. OK, well, right. So we're going to talk about how we go throughout pr producing. Yes, the Produce and production. That was the next thing I was yeah. actually going to get to. Um, so now that, that you, you have a team together, that, that are all good buddies, and, and we're all... Nah. <laughs> Here, have, yeah. have Ice's hat. I have two hats now. Yeah. You have none. <laughs> I'm a unicorn. Your dog. <laughs> oh, that's it. It's Hatcon now. more hats now. I'm, I'm a Team Fortress yeah. character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. So you have your teams all set up. You're ready to produce, theoretically. Yes. Because that's totally how organized we were. Yeah, <clears throat> um, not, not you know, I just at looked at you and thought, where'd your hats go? <laughs> 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 I just like this last five seconds didn't happen. <laughs> you can tell we're, we're totally just. Uh, we're very mature. Very, yeah, so and, and mature. Very, very professional, all, all tie up here. Wait, where, tie. Where'd my tie go? I have everything. <laughs> I was actually going to wear a really nice, elegant dress to this, and then I just. Like, oh. <laughs> but um, so, when when you get started in production, the, there's kind of a, a more linear process um, for when you're thinking about it. We're actually trying to break that down into uh, a less linear process, where basically we work on more than one episode at a time. Um, but for one episode, it's, it's very much a production line type of process. Um, so uh, our writing team, um, we, we've actually got an outline of the story set up that our, our, our writing team uh, references as far as making sure that the uh, important parts of the story get into the episodes. Um, and. Uh, so that we make sure that the uh, cereal is true to the original content. We love cereal. We do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Very delicious. Tricks. I had some this morning. Mm. Yeah. It was Cheerios. Mm -hmm. It was great. Very Cheerios good. are Very good. nice. I like Pop Tarts. Yeah. There's not cereal. <laughs> <laughs> There's hot dog hairs. Mmm. Mmm. Plastic. I had sugar bombs. Nom nom nom. Yeah. Your dentist must be happy. So, um, so we, we send the, uh, our, our writing team takes care of actually writing the scripts, obviously. So um, that, that gets taken care of, and uh, we review the scripts to make sure that it flows well, um, that any uh, direction we need to put in the scripts is there. Uh, we want to make sure it's easy to read for our actors um, so that uh, they can find all of their lines easily. And um, that way, we make sure that all of the recordings come in uh, the first time. And uh, so then that, of course, gets sent off to the actors. And um, maybe, maybe you want to explain like, the whole process mm -hmm. behind like, um, reading off the script and everything? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so I get the script, and... Um, I'm like, this is garbage. No, I look at the script <laughs> and uh, look over the lines. And if I have any questions, I uh, talk to them about it. Because I, um, when I got the role, I read all of Fallout Equestria because I wanted to know like who Little Pip is and like, uh, for yeah, for, I, I got into it. I was, was like, a, this is awesome. That was quite a speed read that you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I wanted to um, make sure I portrayed her right, you know, because um, for the audition, I just did my my stereotypical female heroine voice. But that wasn't who Little Pip necessarily was, you know? Just on paper, sure, she could appear like that, but she has personality and quirks and stuff like that, so I worked what, it into the voice. What, she has personality? What are you talking about? When did that happen? <laughs> Never. No, I, I, I developed a voice for her, and so that was good. But, so, um, I take a look at the script, and I usually do a couple takes of um, every line, 
and sometimes I improv, and there's we have bloopers. I don't know if those will be a thing. I, I want to make them a thing. Yeah. It's just, you know, we've been focused more on getting the, the core content out first. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. But I, I would love to put out a blooper reel. Luna really I apologize for that. That was really well timed. <laughs> Luna, Luna wants a blooper reel. By the way, make sure loves Luna a little, little too much. Uh, I make great bloopers. Oh my god, they're awful. Uh, way not PG-13. <laughs> but they, um, but so uh, since I know Little Pip's character better now, I can uh, record what's originally on the script, but then be like, hey, I think she'd say it more like this, or like, would it be alright if I just improv the little thing, or something like that. But I don't really ask them. I just kind of send it to you. And you're like, this is awesome. Or this is terrible. You've never said that. <laughs> you're, they're always very nice. But uh, yeah, so I... I do a bunch of takes of the actual line, and then sometimes if I have an idea, I'll put that in there, and then um, send them on up. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we'll uh, just oh. yeah, save it for the Q and A. We'll we'll answer it then. So um, you know, now that the voice actors have their lines recorded, um, we send them off to the um, the sound editing people. Yes, and so uh, that for, would be um, Tic Tac. That's my um, department. Yeah, Tic Tac uh, is part of our editing team. He does our sound effects stuff. So we put it through assembly and editing and tic and then it comes to me. I, normally when I get my lines, it's um, they basically they separate all the voice files out. Every like generally, you actually you actually have two sets of lines that come to me. You have the yeah. non degetic lines and the actual spoken lines. Oh, I didn't even know that. We're all <laughs> learning things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. They, they, basically, every set of voice actors' lines comes into the editing basically software. I use uh, um, uh, both Audacity. Jack, before you get too far ahead, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what uh, non-diegetic means, They're bad to it's... digest. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you invited but, um, me on here, to make bad puns. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't take off the hat now. <laughs> it's it's Di basically um, any kind of, any line of um, oh. that a character quote unquote speaks that can't actually be heard by the other characters, like right. can be heard by the audience. So like thought bubbles, as it were. Yeah. So like when, yeah. when Little Pip is like in a room with Velvet and she says, she's thinking, oh my God, you're so hot. You know, we want to be sure that, that he doesn't accidentally make it a line that's spoken aloud or something like that. Yeah, that would be bad. N yeah, non-diegetic. I don't even know. Oh, and also Little Pip swearing internally? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, all the internal swearing, it needs to be on Not, the inside. Yeah. And if it's outside, then it's on the outside. Uh, I'm sorry, if, if we can't wanna, give an example at this panel. I can we give can. you a visual example if you want to look it up. Um, our guy over here, Adam the, Amazing Six, Adam the Amazing 64, actually animated the first part of the episode. And he'll show you diegetic uh, language going on, because basically it, it's her talking to herself and little pep uh, and Re Pilbert remedy so if you want a visual example look them up on YouTube yeah anyway so, sorry for, for sidetracking the attack but, but please continue to steal my thunder here <laughs> <laughs> oh, no um all the lines will come in separate just so I know basically what's what and who's who and then I use both audacity and I use Adobe edition CS 5.5 I believe I think that's the one I have I actually don't know <laughs> I got it for free because my friend bought it. <laughs> have a friend. <laughs> have, Are a you friend. A have a friend or be in art school where they let you get the entire Adobe suite for $35. If, if you're a student, you can get Creative Cloud for like 20 bucks, I think. So, come on. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Or some of us have jobs. But. Oh, we are. You but, know. I mean, what? who are these guys? What? Why are you here again? <laughs> to make because bad puns, I told you that. <laughs> That's because all, the only reason. reason. Stop horsing around. <laughs> Tell us more about audio. Oh my god! I, it took me a second. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all night. Uh, no. <laughs> it's only because you're wearing a hat with the, the horn. That's the only reason I will allow it. Tell us more about audio, Tic Tac. Yes. All right, so Tic Tac was talking about the whole editing process thing. But basically, um, I, do, I do the sound design, which is basically, it's basically sound effects, like any ambience, like in the background, like crickets chirping or water running, or... 
<laughs> Ambience. Like the echo of this room. Sounds like a drug. <laughs> that's not ambience, that's a water jug. <laughs> well, if you were to shake it, then. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. Yeah, um, ambience and like any sound effects, like hooves on dirt, hooves on gravel, hooves on concrete. There's lots of different variations. I like, picture you with like coconuts and you like. <clears throat> that's actually kind of yeah. what I do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, really? So it, it goes into assembly. And so the lines are, are paste, basically. Copy paste, um, basically. Yeah. And then after that, we just need to keep going. Yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, we, we, we space. Out of that, right? mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we space out the lines, um, and making space for sound effects, so the hat can put them in there. Um, and so then once we get all of the uh, character lines uh, appropriately placed, and um, all of the sound effects are in. Uh, we send it off to uh, post for any kind of um, effects we need to put onto the voices or other ambiance. Um, for example, the, the uh, echo effect we put on Little Pip's uh, internal swearing. Um, and uh, then it goes off to our musical team. Um, I think um, I'll have to, unfortunately none of our musicians are here, but since my brother is a musician, I feel I can uh, speak onto some subject. Um, what happens is that our um, our main musician, um, um, what's his user? Warbleist. Uh, Warbleist. Um, uh, yeah. Warbleist. Uh, yeah, Warbleist. He um, he is our main he has our main musician and he puts down cues basically of when he wants the music to start and when he wants the music to stop. He handles some of the music and he passes off some of the music to be handled by my brother. And working together, they get they're given certain cues like between anything between. One, sec one to two second incidental um, um, like, uh, motifs to long, long minute lasting scores. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing there for the, the musical cues is um, that, so uh, for the background music in particular, uh, we establish leet motifs. And so what those are for is um, it's a little musical phrase that will come up whenever a place or a character or some other important idea uh, is presented. Um, and so it associates that oral cue with that particular important idea, which is especially important um, in a completely uh, oral medium. Um, the music provides like the visuals mm -hmm. of this radio play. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, all right. Um, and so uh, we get the background music all put together. Um, and that's usually the, um, the last st step in the actual audio production of the episode. Um, usually at that point, once we have the audio or the, the music levels uh, properly uh, tweaked so that it's not uh, blaring over the voices and whatnot. Gee, I can't hear Little Pep behind all these trumpets. Um, <laughs> our art team gets a hold of the episode <laughs> and um, comes up with an appropriate uh, cover so that we can put it on YouTube and not just have a yep. boring black background. And um, you know, so we can also put it up for material, uh, promotional materials. You know, I can draw on MS Paint. So if you need anything, you know. Oh, you too, I, huh? I got yeah. you. We, we should totally collab sometime. You totally this is the first step. I do great MS Paint art. But um, in order to just go a little deeper into the artistic process, um, I get I usually um I I get to listen over to the episode. That gives me a whole a general idea of what's going on, what characters are introduced, what um what the music is like, what kind of mood that we're going for. So I also want to note that most of the team has read the story, so it's not like um, when they're being introduced to the episode that most folk um, on the team aren't actually intimately familiar with it, because we do find that to be important to have a good product, is that most of the team is very familiar with the story. Um, it also helps because then if someone misses something that's important to the story, other people catch it. Um, but then, you know, listening to the episode helps well, with uh, understanding how we're presenting it. Um, and then everything fits together as uh, one cohesive product. So generally, when I, when I, when I, when I um, do the art, I generally start out with a, with a basic sketch that's, um, that will just basically be a guide to what it's going to look like. For instance, when I made this, 
I was referencing the, um, the movie poster of the, the first Hobbit movie when it was coming out because it was coming out around the same time as we were starting to release the, fi the first episode of our play. So I figured, hey, Bilbo leaving the shy, leaving his home, it was, it, was a very, it was a very striking poster for me. So I want to reference that when I created this. Once I finished the sketch, I start working on doing the, um, on doing the character art. And while I pass the background off to my brother, who, um, who will then render it in um, this, uh, this very nice painterly style that he has. Once he's done with that, I start pu pu putting everything together, smushing it together, and um, starting putting effects like those, like the, like the wall, the texturing on the wall, the vignette effect around the uh, edges, the smoke, the lighting, the shading, and everything, as well as laying out the text over the, um, over the art. And once I'm done with that, I pretty much um, present it to the team, see what else needs to be tweaked and fixed. Like for instance, forgetting that little Pip's um, Pip <laughs> buck is actually on her right hoof and not her left. Silly yeah. ass. And then we're like, hey. I could change it, you know? <laughs> Just yeah. take it, we'll it up, put it back up. <laughs> <laughs> but then from there, um, that, that ends my, my, my um, job. Um, unless they need to talk with Cal Payne. I'm like, I'm like the EQD. Um, um, per person. Yeah, he's our EQD liaison. Yeah. Even though I'm the PR guy, he's the EQD guy. Yeah. So. Um, so then, Aggie gets a hold of it and works his PR magic. Yeah, I, I have my ways of doing things, mm -hmm. but mostly we. I talk to radio stations. We get our get them figured out. You know, when can you air it? Uh, can you, you know, here's the file. Make sure you don't do this or that. Where we had one instance where they actually created a introduction that took forever wasn't up to our standards, but, you know, hey, we appreciate the gesture, but we had to control our quality. But, no, we do that, and then we get it released, we, we, you know, get it off the EQD, we get, you know, get it all scheduled. And then, when it airs, after that, about a day or two, we'll upload it to YouTube and then share it to the world. Um, but That's when you all and hear it. And that's after, when you all come in. And after that, um, I go back and read all the comments, all the likes, so, Hey, it's awesome, or hey, we, there's too much of this, or that you did this wrong, or I think those first. <laughs> what? First. Yeah. Well, okay. I try to look over, look over those, but like, well, in episode one, there was a note of uh, there was too much narrator uh, in there. Well, what we did is we took that note and we added it to our production. Like, okay, there's even though Scorch is awesome doing the narration, maybe we need to adjust it because our fans are saying. So it's over and over again, like this common thing. So apparently, kind of, people don't like his uh, velvety voice, which I don't oh, understand. I mean, They're just flat out wrong. It's not that it's the voice; it's that it's not a, <laughs> appropriate for the. Venue. Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, it's not appropriate for the 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 the, the form of radio uh, to be as long and as interjected as it was. Um, yeah, no, it, it was a totally valid point, um, and and it is why we uh, and, take that kind of stuff into consideration. And, and we like that. We like getting comments and feedback that helps us improve our product mm -hmm. because, well, our yeah, our product because we're making it for you. We're we're doing it for free, but we're making it for you. And if we can make it better for you, then we will. Um, America wins again. Yes, mm -hmm. capitalism. Yes. <laughs> and there's no money. Involved. So. Um, and so, yeah, then we get the fan feedback, uh, we refine the process further, and... Then we start cracking down on the next one. Basically. Yeah. yeah. But I thought you said, then we start cracking next, and I'm like, what? If you, if you <laughs> give us a bad call, then we'll too. find you. It's difficult in the way That's pretty much our process. Uh, I think we have a few minutes left here. Yeah. Um, a little while left, actually. For... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, how the hell did uh, My Little Pony enter all out? Ooh. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a question K -Cat. for K-Cat, I think, uh, right? Yeah. But before we actually start... No, this is an open question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we actually start taking questions, we're actually going to have a, a microphone set up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask that people uh, keep their questions um, PG-13. Um, and spaghetti free. Since, you know, we, we are at a PG-13 convention. But I always go ahead and just line up right over here. Uh, and we will answer any questions that you have to the best of our ability. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Henry. I live in New York. Um, and I'm trying to record my own radio play for a school project. It's um, To Kill a Mockingbird. And I was just wondering, uh, how do you record ambience, you know, the ambient noise and all that? How do you get that? Uh, it's interesting you ask that question um, because actually one of the things I forgot to bring up is we actually do have a little bit of a Foley team. 
Um, so uh, when we do need to record things like, um, say, the fans for the stable, um, paper, wrestling paper. Uh, a number of those uh, background sounds I, I actually recorded myself um, for Warbless to put in um, using basically uh, a, a little heater fan next to my microphone, and then we slowed it down for the, the big whirring, you know, whoa, 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 uh, you know, stable generator um, turbine sounds. And um, so uh, there, if you want to get like really professional with it, there's actually like field microphones you can get. They look like big handheld radar dishes, <laughs> um, but that can get a bit pricey. Um, so uh, if you can't do that, um, the other option is, um, uh, if you have a handy microphone, you can kind of make do um, just going out and if you can find some place local, uh, if you need like some outdoor sounds or whatnot uh, to get the ambiance. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, like for the, the turbine sounds, for example, we, we literally just find whatever's handy um, and tweak it as we can. Yeah, you really you um, just want to experiment with what you have around you. Right. That's yeah. what I do when I'm creating sounds for us. And just um, just to um, just to add to that, um, I would say try to avoid like sounds you can find on Google, like stock sounds, because there is almost nothing that can pull you out of an experience like noticing like a sound Will that you heard scream. anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> like, don't don't try yeah, too like, hard on it. Once something They're becomes so like a stock sound can become almost iconic in a sense, like the Wilhelm scream. Yeah. You just, so you just leg, right? yeah my leg. <laughs> Um, well, we do have a Tumblr. It's equestrianbroadcastingcompany.tumblr.com. I don't know if we have asks turned on, but I will. I, be... I think we do. Are you on Twitter at all? Me? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Facebook. We also have Facebook. If you want to ask that way, it may be a little bit easier to see the response because Tumblr for me kind of doesn't work a lot because of the notification system. Yeah, sometimes um, asks get like um, eaten, and we have no idea that you sent us anything. Yeah, so if you have Facebook, you're welcome to like ask on Facebook, and I'll see what we can do to answer your question. Otherwise, you know, if Tumblr is more convenient for you, we do have that as well. We check that too. Yeah. So just to review, don't use the stock sounds. Go out. To the um, city, try to report some things. There are some good stock sounds out there. It's not like stock sounds on the internet are automatically bad. Um, it, it, it's Depends. just, yeah, like, like Ace said, um, be careful of what you grab if you do decide to do that. Because um, some things might be a lower quality than your mic, or your mic's a holler, or vice versa, you know? So if, yeah. if it clashes together, people get, like, turned off by it, you know? I got you. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. sure. My leg! <laughs> <laughs> um, testing, testing, one, two, three. Um, yes. Hello, um, my name is Unova Brony. Um, currently, um, my question to you is, how has Fallout Equestria impacted your lives, and how did it get you to the point that you were making a ro 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 radio play out of it? I can start if you want. Sure. Yeah, uh, let's just um, go down the table, I guess. I actually didn't start with My Little Pony. I uh, somehow found on the uh, Fallout subreddit, from my Reddit a lot, uh, there's, a, just, there's a, a split off for ponies. and. I didn't know about ponies at that point, so I had read the story completely, and for about seven, eight, nine, ten months, I didn't know the ponies existed. And then I thought they were just, okay, I'm used to character, like cartoon characters, right? So, okay, cartoon equines, fine. Then I discovered there's actually a show about it, so that's how I got into ponies. And I've, already, I've been a musician for, well, a musician that doesn't produce anything out, uh, publicly for about 12 years, so I kind of applied my knowledge of sound and my hearing to the project after you know, hearing about, oh, they're making a radio play. So I applied my skills there. Uh, as for me, I actually was a fan of the show from way back when, um, still during season one, actually. But I was also really into Fallout at the time, so I was playing a lot of Fallout. Eventually, I actually found out through Equestria Daily that there's a Fallout Equestria co er, book being written. I went, okay, I'll check it out. So I checked it out, and eventually it got to the point where I read all of the current chapters, because it was still being written. And it got to the point where 
When it came out, a new chapter as the, at the same time as the new episode, I was more interested in reading the chapter than the new episode. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to do that multiple times. Um, and then I went, oh, well, there's, a, there's an IRC chat for this. Well, I'll just go hang out on there. Um, and I actually was uh, originally on the Fallout Equestria mod voice actor list. But this group has much, much better organization, in my opinion. I, I actually work on the, the, the group. The Overmare Studios is actually a derivative of the original group. I can tell you that I like this group a lot better. Um, so, uh, I got into My Little Pony during uh, season one, but I did not know that there was a community. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched through basically all of the episodes on YouTube and then was like, oh, that was neat, and then wandered away. Um, and then found, oh, hey, there's a season two. And there's, there's like, oh, there's a website. The, what, what's this Equestria Daily thing? <laughs> and, um, story yeah, and uh, so uh, the, I'm not going to go through the entire story because it's going to, you know, I, I could spend three hours talking about the entire story, but basically that wound up with me getting onto the radio play eventually. And I'd done uh, voice acting um, in my engagement with the Mist community uh, a while back, um, actually just over the years. Um, and so, suffice to say, though, I found Fallout Equestria on Equestria Daily and um, this audiobook thing by this Scorch Mechanic guy. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. That it's a voice is. thing. I like doing voice things. And um, then I found out that he was taking, like, guest voices. I'm like, oh, oh. And... Um, looking at the, the different characters uh, that had not yet uh, been introduced to the story. And one of the uh, characters that had not been introduced yet uh, at the point that his audiobook had been out, and actually he hasn't still released that chapter yet, but uh, was a peculiar zebra mare named Zenith. And I'm like, <clears throat> on the one hand, I'm a dude. so. I'm not sure that I, I should be auditioning for a female character, but on the other hand, at my, my job at the call center, people mistake me for a girl all the time. <laughs> so, um, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look at Zakora's voice and draw some inspiration within that. And so, Edith, I'm like, Zakora. Um, no, you do inspiration from oh. Zakora. Voice. Yeah. That's and so, I, I started to put together a bit of a more exotic voice. Um, oh, feminine, of course. Um, I, was, I was still trying to convey that insane zebra logic, I think you put it. Um, and so through that, basically wound up getting onto the radio play and the rest is history. Um, Ancient history. Yes. Yeah. I see. Um, how I got into show was that I saw this weird... Um, with this weird little animation of um, Pinkie Pie doing a, doing a march, um, leading, doing her Pinkie um, Paris Bright march with a, song, with a song about a combine harvester. And I was like, <laughs> it was very strange, it was very strange. Da -da -da -da, combine harvester and I'll give you the key. And I was like, okay, this is weird. But moved on, at least the animation was nice, that's what I thought. Then later on, I went on to Game Informer and it was like, Mass Effect 2 trailer with ponies. I was a big Mass Effect fan. I was like, what? Okay, watching this. Okay, that was pretty interesting. Okay, a few months later, I found out about bronies. It's like, people watch this thing? It's an actual show and a lot of people watching it? Okay, first episode, let's go. I'm not gonna like it. Second episode, let's watch the next one. <laughs> End of it. Oh my God, I like this show. <laughs> So then it went on from there. I ended, I ended up becoming an artist in the fandom. And, um, and, and then, you know, I started drawing more and more. Uh, thanks to the help of, like, one of my, one of my friends, Veggie55, I became, like, I became, I became a lot more prominent and, became, and become, became a lot more prolific with my art. And um, then there was Fallout Equestria. I was a huge, fall, I'm a, I was a huge Fallout fan. Like, um, 
I'm a classic Fallout fan. I played Fallout 1 and 2. So um, then I found out that there was a, there was a, a story about, like, oh, oh, this sounds like right up my alley. <laughs> so I started reading it, like, religiously, while I was at work. Like, um, seriously, my boss was right, my supervisor was right over my shoulder. I was just like reading a Google document, and it was like, hey, you're working right, alt tab, server management, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, and then that eventually led for, um, I got, I, once the story was done, I was re I was like excited. It was like, it was like one of the, I, I thought it was like one of the best stories I've ever read. So, um, then I made, I want to try to make an animation for it. I'm not very good at animation. So um, I kind of worked on like two seconds of it, and I got done. But then um, that's when um, Radio Hooves came up to me. It's like, hey, how would you like to be the art director for this radio play? And as a result, I ended up becoming like the like the second person he hired on for this thing. Like um, next to uh, Phil, um, our the voice actor for Calamity, uh, Philster One. Phil, uh, Philsterman O One. Yeah, Philsterman O One. I am the oldest. Like I'm the I am like the most senior member of this team. It was Phil and then you and then Shu, I think. Yeah. And Shoo. then I think he came, it went to Jesse. Yep. And then... Uh, and then everyone... everyone yeah, and then the, the rest of it was kind of a... I didn't know I was one of the first people. That's nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, now your story. Oh, my story. Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the audition for Lil Pip, like, the first thing I noticed Radio Hooves is, like, um, email to me originally was, like, super professional and like we'd like to do this and this and this and he was so well spoken that I was like okay yeah he's, he's still like that even in just one on one chat it's yeah kind he of is strange. it's great <laughs> and like um, I imagine him just like he doesn't even wear a suit and tie it's just <laughs> part of his skin yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was born with it but um but yeah so I auditioned and um Little Pip has like really really he appreciate that helped reference. me with um acting because uh, usually when I audition for uh, young female heroines, I usually just use the same voice. It's up here, da da da, I'm gonna fight you, whatever. But um, that's why I originally auditioned for Little Pip with that voice. But um, as I read the story, I was like, oh, I gotta change something up. I gotta like make this her voice, not just my voice. Uh, and so that really challenged me as, a, as an actress, you know, and like, so, you know, I've never voiced a character that was quite like her, you know? She has a high voice and it's also squeaky and cracks sometimes when she's nervous and it's just like one of the, one of the more unique voices I have and I have it thanks to the radio play, you know? So it's really changed my life for the better. Yeah, that, that reminds me a little bit, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm Jeez, holding it off from Tic Tac again. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. Uh, it, just, it, it reminds me for when I was actually auditioning with Scorch for um, the part of Zenith because I was uh, trying to um, you know, do this, this female voice and, but still make it sound legit. You know, I didn't want to sound like, oh my gosh, I'm doing fake girl voice. <laughs> he um, said, oh. I'm 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 Zenith and I'm a zebra and I do zebra things. Um, Let's change her. Let's change her to that. <laughs> so, yeah. so, okay, mark it down. That's official. Uh, uh, I I was not uh, actually uh, expecting a um, reply from Scorch, and I sat there for like a week and and basically forgot about it uh, by the time that I got this email in my inbox. I was like, a winner is you. <laughs> I'm like. Is this spam? No, wait. The, the, that's not a spam email. That's that's. Oh, oh. We did literally title it "A Winner Is You." Yes. Wow. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. Professionalism. Yes. Yes. Um, so and this was for the audiobook. Um, and so, uh, basically, inside was a a you're hired, because you know what what what's money? I don't understand. Um, but. Uh, and a copy-pasted Skype chat between him and K-Cat. Um, and oh, yeah. Uh, cause they're, they're actually really good friends. Um, fun fact. Um, and the one thing that I remember most about that email, because it really made me uh, excited as an actor, uh, cause I think it's one of the highest forms of praise, is when the person who created the character you're trying to portray says, that is so her. Um, 
so uh, I was just kind of sitting there staring at the, um, uh, staring at, you know, after having really pushed my limits with this voice and, and, and seeing some kind of s success with it. Um, and uh, it really excited me to, uh, uh, with getting more involved in voice acting than I'd been already. Um, Can I go now? No, one more thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like the most incredible feeling ever when like, I'd never done something like that where the character didn't have a voice and it was, um, uh, for a radio play that is, and uh, the author had like heard my stuff and like made a response to it, you know, like had said, oh, this is good, this is bad, whatever. Because um, my first voice for Lil Pip that was just a high female heroine voice, she liked, you know, K-Cat liked. She was like, this is a good voice. But then once I changed it up, she said, that's, that's the voice. That's like, that's Little Pip. And I was like, I'm melting. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh my God, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Now you can go. Okay. <laughs> Do you still want to go? <laughs> no, you have permission. No, wait, I have something else to say. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Well then, those people are done being themselves. Um, actually, I got into the fandom like Aggie did through Fall of Equestria. I just stumbled across it on DeviantArt. And, oh, we have five minutes left, don't we? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'll be quick. Um, but yeah, I just kind of found it on DeviantArt. And I was like, oh, hey, what was this? And I read it, and I didn't know what Fallout was, and I didn't know what ponies were. And I just read it. <laughs> I just went in, I went in completely blind and I loved it and it just kind of went from there and then I believe Radio Hooves approached me on the IRC and asked him and asked me if I wanted to be a basically enclave and raider voice voice actor I'm like sure why not and I did some lines for the first episode and then all of our editors disappeared and I'm like I'll do the sound editing <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened <laughs> But it wasn't so much that the editors disappeared as, as we needed dedicated editors. But, AKA they disappeared. Um, yeah, because if, so, if you have a different editor for every episode, it might be noticeable, you know, because some people have different styles and such. So it, it looks Can like I we're, we're needing question? to wrap up the panel here pretty soon. So I don't know if we have time for any more questions. I'll make one more question. But maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do one more quick round question, and then we'll have to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, I have an announcement at the end, though. We'll get to that, though. Okay. <laughs> Go. okay. Now I'm starting to wonder whether I should even bother or not. <laughs> no. Alex, ask the question. All right, I will. So I was actually involved in a radio play for a webcomic that... They oh, should yeah. know about, yeah. yeah. And uh, By the I had, way, had, I had, that's, had my, that's, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, I had gotten the ma the male lead in that one, and uh, it seemed like everything was going really well. And then, as soon as production started, like there was, it was entirely plagued with problems, and it just seemed to go. It got to the point where I was basically turned off from doing voice acting. I haven't done like anything major after that whole thing now because I just couldn't take that. And I, what I'm basically wondering is like, you guys seem to be a nice big unit here and you all work well together, but is there any like uh, times in like this project or other projects where it's like you're having to deal with uh, problem people or problems in general and that you need to take care of in a project setting like this? Um, you know, yeah, uh, problems are just a thing that happen. Um, the, the question is not if you encounter problems, but how you deal with them. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the big things of, of uh, why it's great that we're such a big cohesive unit is because we're able to really uh, immediately tackle problems um, and we, we all take care of that as a team. And so we get through that really quickly and um, it's usually pretty drama free and uh, then we just move on with the project. Um, you know, a, a lot of times we just joke about whatever happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, we usually don't even have a lot of internal conflict or anything because we do get along so well. Yeah, pers uh, as having been involved in other projects and stuff, I'm honestly really surprised that there has no nothing has ever blown up in this project. You know, <laughs> I'm really surprised and I'm really happy about that. As soon as right, you so say that, my <laughs> Aggie has an announcement, and then we really need to wrap it up because I've pushed it past our time already because I'm a terrible person. Okay, if y'all actually have a question, this is not the announcement. If you have a question, just drop us a line: Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter. 
um, EBC One Productions. Well, you just run us so down we'll, at the convention. We'll get to your question. Don't don't worry. Um, the announcement I was going to make was, yeah, we we couldn't play any of our content uh, today, today. We ran out of time. Mm -hmm. However, our Argo Damon over here has taken our radio play episode one parts of it and made an SFM video, really really nice SFM video, and he will be broadcasting this the video he took he took our audio and made an animation out of um, on Sunday 1:45 to in the, the, the hollow moon. Uh, so if you want to come listen to what we actually make in a little bit, I think it's like five minutes, six minutes, something like that. What is that again? Uh, is Filming His Magic SFM Ponies, and he will be, uh, it's the exclusive, right? Yeah, world premiere of the, the animation that he's been working on for many, many months, since February, right? Sunday. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming to see From Pen to Program, an uh, audio adaptation uh, presented by the Equestrian Broadcasting Company. Uh, we love to have you here and enjoy the con.